the simplest ways to factor polynomials is just to look at the whole mess and see if there's some sort of common thing that each monomial has that you can sort of suck out and factor out. This is sort of looking at it as a common factor. Just look at each term, and if you can find a common factor, to pull it out. That's the easiest thing to do. In fact, if you pull out as much as possible, what you're pulling out is sometimes called the greatest common factor. That's the biggest thing that all these terms have in common, the greatest common factor. Let's do an example, and you can see exactly how this works. This is the, certainly by far the easiest method to use to factor. And so you're saying, well, why wouldn't I use this method? Well, because sometimes there isn't a common factor that every single term has. But when they're is, this is the thing to do. So here's an example. Look at this polynomial. Uh, 4x cubed times y cubed plus 8x to the fourth, y cubed minus 12x squared, y to the fourth. Well, notice there is so much stuff that each of these monomial terms individually have in common. For example, they all have even coefficients. In fact, you can pull out a 4 from everybody. And notice there's a lot of x's. There's, there's x cubed here. So there's three of them here. There's four of them here. And there's two of them here. So what's the biggest thing I can pull out? Well, the biggest thing I can pull out is actually not an x cubed, because I don't have enough of them here. So the biggest thing I can pull out is actually just the x squared. I can pull out two of them. All of them here, I guess half of them here, and then all but one here. But even y's are in common. This is tons of commonality. And it looks like I can actually factor out three y's, a y cubed, because there's three of them here, three of them here, and four of them here. So I have one left over here. So if I pull out the greatest common factor, what would that look like? Well, the greatest common factor would be a 4, because that's the biggest common factor amongst all these, these coefficients. And what about the x's? Well, it looks like I have x squared everywhere, but no more because of that one. And it actually looks like I have a y cubed everywhere, but no more because of these guys. Now, if I factor that out, what remains? So now I'm going to factor that out, and I'm going to write what remains. So I'm basically going to be undoing the distributive property. So what I have to make sure of here is that whatever I write here, it has the feature that if I distribute this back, I should get this answer. So to make this really an equal sign, we have to be very careful. So what do I need here? Well, I, I pulled out the 4 already, so I don't need the 4. Well, I have x squared here, but I need an extra x. So I put an x here. But there's no need for any extra y's. Notice that if I just take this and multiply it by x, what do I get? I get exactly that, because everything stays except this goes up exponent by 1. Okay. So now what happens when I factor out of here? I factor out of here, well, the 8 requires an extra 2. And then I have an x squared to bump this up to an x to the fourth, and no y's. Now, but actually, I don't like what I just did, because see, this is naked here. And sometimes you may think it's just taking all the product together. But no, remember, there's an addition here. So I have to put that plus sign in. And here, a minus sign is required. And I have a 3 times 4 to make a 12. And I don't need any x squareds at all. And here, I need an extra y to top off the tank to make it a y to the fourth. Now, this term here, we can try to factor it using different techniques. But actually, that can't be factored anymore. At least I can't see how to factor it. So in fact, this would be the factorization of this really, really long, complicated trinomial. It's this factor times that. Again, the theme is using a common factor. In fact, pulling out the greatest common factor. Let's do one last one real fast. How about 3ab squared minus 6a squared b cubed? In fact, let me give you a second to see if you can actually guess as to what the greatest common factor is. So I just don't want just ordinary common factor. I want the biggest possible common factor, the greatest common factor. See if you can guess the biggest common factor for these two terms right here. And then we'll factor it out. OK, well, let's see. I don't know what the answer is, but let's see if we can figure it out right now live. I see that in the terms of the coefficient department, I can pull out a 3 everywhere, but no more. I can pull an a out everywhere, but no more, because there's only one a here. And here I can pull out, pull out a b squared, but I can't pull out a b cubed, because I don't have enough here. So it looks like that 3a b squared is, in fact, the greatest common factor. And if I factor that out, what am I left with? Well, let's see. What am I left with here? Well, it looks like I'm left with nothing here. So maybe I should write 0. Maybe I should write 0 there. Well, that wouldn't work, because if I distribute this thing times 0, would give me 0, and I'd lose that term. So what should I write in here? Well, what I should write in here, of course, is the invisible 1 that's always everywhere you go, always behind you, is an invisible 1. 
So in fact, there's a one factor here. Maybe I can write it out right in front here. And that one factor would still remain. And notice now, when I take this and multiply by 1, I happily get this. So remember, don't put a 0. Always put a 1 if you take out everything. Well, here, I don't take out everything. I have a negative 2. And I need an extra a to top off the a squared. And I need an extra b. So in fact, you can check this by taking this and multiplying it through by the 1. You get this. Multiplying this through by this, I'd see a 6 minus 6 a squared b cubed. This is a great technique when every single monomial has a common factor. Always pull out the common factors first. Even if you have to do more factoring later in life, always start by seeing if you can pull out a common factor. It's the easiest thing to do and has the power to actually make the problem easier. We'll see other techniques if you want, if you dare.